I've got some squid bait on this side, and on the hand line I've got three hooks and also got squid bait. So let's see how we get on, hey Pace? Give me a little bite just now. That was very quick, small fish. Was it a red cod, perhaps? Or a little shark, maybe? Very big fish, whatever it is. What have we got? Oh, jeez, a tiny little car white. Bloody hell, how did that get caught on there? Man, that's tiny. Oh, it's good to know this cow white down there. Bit of old shark, mate. Eh? Bit of shark. Bit of shark, dear. Okay, chew on that. Both lines going off at the same time. What have we got here? Bloody shark. Spiny bloody dogfish. There's one on this one too. It took off quite fast. Quite a good sized fish, whatever it is. Yeah, what's that? Hopefully not a shark. Oh, I think it's a barracuda, is it? Bloody is too, barracuda. No, oh, we'll keep that. Let's if he doesn't bite through. Just smoke him up. Happy days, look at that, and he swallowed the thing right down his guts. It's a big fish. Yeah, they're nice in the smoke of those. Wouldn't get your nose too close here, Muddy. Oh. Lucky you didn't uh, bite that right off. He's, uh, he's afraid all that quite a bit. What do you reckon, Pace? Big fish, eh? Well, that is a grey boy. We can eat that. Nothing wrong with that for eating. They get a lot bigger, but they also get a lot smaller as well. And he's tangled up my other line. This is what they use in New Zealand for fish and chips. Put this back down over the side. And you'll get surprisingly quite a bit of fish out of this little fella. What are these little things stuck on the side of him here? Look at this. These guys here going for a ride, check that out. Some sort of parasite, see that? Never seen those before. They're going along for the ride. Isn't that interesting? And he's all this green stuff coming at him. Doesn't look too bloody flash. What's all that green stuff? Yeah, I don't know about you, mate. You've got parasites and you've got green stuff coming out of you. We're going to eat you? It smells alright. Give him a bit of a wash. The parasites let go. They thought it wasn't a good idea to stay on board. Got one on top of his head still. Never seen those before on a shark. That's interesting. And the green stuff stopped coming out. We'll put him to sleep. And uh, drop his guts out. Quite a few baits out here. They're all out over here. Further out than I am. And uh, I'm quite fit. Whoa, there's a tug there. Still on. Got him. Oh, that's a bit of a heavy fish. What's that? A big red cod. Oh, ho. <laughs> Look at that, eh? He's a big one too. What a cracker. Look at that pace, eh? It's bigger than you, mate. It's bigger than you, pal. It's a big fish. Oh, keep him for the pot. Might have to do some surgery with the knife, I think. Ain't gonna get that out. A lot of people don't like the uh, red cod because they've got the nematode worm in them. Sometimes you can see it down inside its mouth there, but uh, I'll bloody eat it. Nothing wrong with it. I'll do this in a curry. These soft baits were given to me. I've never used them before. Little crab. I'm not even sure how you're supposed to bait soft baits. I suppose you stick it through the guts. Like that. Stick a bit of squid in there for flavour because it smells like rubber to me. It's probably quite an old one. It's been to pack it for too long. I suppose I've got a use by date. Being partially organic. I don't know. 
bit of that stuff will uh, give it a flavour. We'll see how that works. There's a few paddle crabs out there right now, so maybe something sees it and goes, yep, I'll let you. I'll hoof this over the side. See if it brings us anything. That's a fucking useless cast. Can we do better than that? Yeah, doesn't matter. We're just fishing out of the boat anyway. It's just kind of nice to get some of the lines away from each other. Righty, eight. We'll leave that there and just let it on the free run. Put some bait on this sucker and get it out in the water. And so the rod's way the hell over here. Let's get this down here. Now we got a fish on. Still on? Yep. Kawa, is it? Nice kawa, we'll keep you. Stay on, mate. Stay on. Stay on. I would love to take kawa home. Oh, it's just gonna just gonna hook in. Jeez, I'm gonna lose that. In the boat. Happy days. I really wanted to catch a kawai today. It's our favourite sashimi fish next to kingfish out here. And it's a nice one too. Happy days. Just put him on the lead clamp. Take that out. And we got him on the crab. So they eat the crabs, eh? Oh, he was well hooked. He wasn't going to come out. So we caught him on the crab. What we're going to do is we're going to bleed him. The way we're going to do that is we're just going to snap his head back. Which will bleed him out. Over the side of the boat. He's already dead because they've broken his neck. And it just gets the blood out. Old heart pumping her out there. That's better. Oh, it's a bloody mess. It's caught around the other line. It's a bloody shark, I think. What do we got? Was oh, it a carpet shark? That's oh, a gurnet. Happy days. Nice one. Bloody good. Oh, happy days. Picked up the other rod, that's why I thought it was a shark. Happy days. We'll keep that, Grunter. Nice big carrot, and you picked up the other, other line. Beautiful big fish. Well, welcome to the kitchen. Check out the size of that sucker. That is a big fish. A big red cod. Now, New Zealand, these fish aren't that popular. People get a bit fussy because we've got all sorts of fish here to choose from, but I'll tell you what, this will be good chewing, and I'm going to carry this one up. It's also known as uh, the Akara cod. They give it a fancy name to try and tizzy it up, but it is just red cod. When I was a boy, it was one of the fish that my mum could afford, so we get fed it quite a bit, and from my memories, it was good. She'd deep fry it or curry it, and yeah, she made well out of it. So uh, I'm not too fussy. I'll eat it. It's a fish that's not much fun on the on the line either. When you play it, it's a bit sluggish. It doesn't really put up much of a fight. And it's not the prettiest looking fish in the ocean, is it? But like I said, it's fresh. And if you don't overcook it, good chewing. Right, stop the yakking and we'll tear into it. I've already taken one foot it off and I didn't film it, so I'll film the other side for you. Just so you can see how it's done. So what I do with these is I start off at the top on the spine. It's actually easier if I left the other side on because it's uh, sort of, I don't know, stands up better but I start down here. I'll just turn this dripping tap off. It'll piss us all off otherwise. And just feel where the, the bones are. Come right down the fish. Right down to the end here. Want a real sharp knife for doing these. And uh, on the angle down here. You'll feel those bones as close to them as you can. 
There we go. Probably can't see very well from that angle. I'm trying to turn it, I'm turning it around so you can see a bit better on this side. Sort of going a bit nasty about face here. Let's get the knife in to show you a bit. Just going around those ribs. That's a big fillet. I'm not seeing any worms in there like I thought I might, so that's a good sign. Not that they really bother me if they were. Not a lot of flesh at the end of the tail, it's pretty thin. See how I fill it there. I don't think these are very easy fish to fill it. And I imagine skinning them is not much easier. So the fillet didn't come off very well, but we'll see if we get on. Oh yeah, not too bad. Oh, too easy. I recently choked on a fish bone and uh, ended up going to bloody hospital. They couldn't get it out and eventually I swallowed a bit of mandarin when I was actually out fishing and that brought it down. So we've got bones right down the middle here and uh, what we do is I'm just going to run down this side of the line and hopefully that will take the flesh out that doesn't have the bones. How's it feel? Pretty bloody good. Just to get a foot in there. Might chop it a bit smaller for the the curry, and there's a few bones down the middle there. So we've got ribs there. Here we go. And we'll make that, uh, say, three bits for the curry. Nice. There's a little rabbit underneath my herb garden. This is my little herb garden, I've got some thyme, some basil growing here, some oregano, a bit of rosemary, some sage, and a bit of this, which I want to take. This is coriander. Just going to pick a few of these off. Well, at least cut them. It's better for the plant. It's fresh, it's good. This is a new wok I've just bought. I'm just giving it a bit of a clean out with some water. I've been boiling water for about two or ten minutes. What we're gonna do is set that heat up a bit, it was pretty hot anyway, and whack some of this in. This is coconut oil. That's the handle of the spoon I'm using. It was made for me by a young mushroom who I take out. I think that uh, oil is pretty hot to start throwing some stuff in. See there's a bit of smoke coming off, they're gonna whack the garlic in first. And that's about five or six cloves of garlic. And that garlic was grown in the Catlins by Stu Drever. He sent that to me. It's bloody nice garlic. See some ginger I've just cut up. Whack that in on top. Two baby red onions. Chopped up. One freshly chopped tomato. And about half a teaspoon of ground chilli. One heat tablespoon of curry, yellow curry. Now coriander. This is coconut cream and I've added a little bit of water to it. I'm putting in about half a cup there for starters. Just a wee bit more. Let that get some heat going. This here is pure raw bush honey that my mate Rick gave me. This is going to give it a sweet taste. I'm just about ready to add some fish in there and start cooking it. There's one more ingredient I want to put in though before I do that, and that's turmeric. For taste and for colour. This is organic turmeric powder. And I whack it just roughly. That's going to make it nice and yellow. Yeah, I like the taste of turmeric. It goes well with curry. Stir that in well. 
do give us a real bright yellow colour once it starts to get mixed in properly. Let it simmer for a little bit. It tastes pretty good, we're going to work a little bit of Himalayan pink salt in this. That'll be enough. Stir that in. Oh, this looks great. Right, yeah, we're going to stick our fish in here now. And we're not going to give it too long in there. There's one thing I don't like is overcooked fish. I'm actually quite partial to raw fish or sashimi, so I'm probably going to give that about five minutes once it starts to actually simmer again. I'm serving this curry with some Nordic bread I made, or caveman bread. If you're on a ketogenic diet, this is a great bread to have. It's all basically nuts and seeds. And the spoon I'm serving it up with, or this serving thing, which I'm doing a messy job and getting on the table, but who cares really, because there's only me here. It's made by my son, it's made out of Rimu. So we'll just have that much for now. I'm going to have this with some nicely steamed asparagus. You know, I used to eat with my children every night and then of course my son left home because he got to that age and then my daughter left home. So I really do enjoy making these videos and sharing my food with you guys. Can't really share it because he can't eat it, but I can tell you what, it smells bloody good. So it's kind of nice to make a video and sit down and feel like I'm not totally alone because a lot of work goes into a meal like this and when you're by yourself sometimes it's hard to put the effort into cooking for yourself. How does it taste? Honest opinion. Well, the the curry is perfect. The taste is absolutely just what I wanted. It's got the nice bite of a little bit of chili I put in. You can taste the garlic and the ginger and the coriander nicely. So it gives it that herb taste. The fish is soft. It's a soft fish. Like monk fish is actually better for doing a curry with. But hey. It's the only fish I've got and it's not bad at all. The trick is to not overcook it like I've done. I wouldn't want to cook it anymore. They had about four minutes in the pan and uh, it's actually really, really nice. A bit of caveman bread. Avocado always goes good with fish. and some greens just to make me feel like I'm eating something healthy, asparagus. I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. Good luck with your own fishing, harvesting of food. Stay healthy, look after each other, and thanks for watching the video. Smash the like button if you're still watching it. And if you're not subscribed to my channel and you like this sort of thing, hit the subscribe button so you can get more stuff. You've got to hit the bell notification thing. Hitting the likes is really important because it helps the video get more views because the more likes they get the more views so it brings it up and keeps me happening thanks for your support be good can't be good be careful see you later